save all this for the interview, or you want to go ahead and, or, or I, I can tell you behind, I can tell you now. Just keep going, man. Yeah, yeah, all right, for sure, yeah. So essentially, I've, I've been, like, I've been, I've been recording for the last minute because once we start talking about good stuff, I just record because I can use it. I can just put I'm it in my later. Man. Niggas started rapping. Facts. Niggas wanted to have what happened. Told a bad bitch, take a picture with a sad. Take a picture with a sad. Oh, neck don't go, nose ring full of carrots. That's old to me, bro. I finished that a while ago. Like the day I dropped that, I finished the next tape, and that tape is three times as good. And I know, I, you know, every every rapper says, "Oh man, my my new shit is better." Like I get that, but the thing is, like, you gotta understand, I'm 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 hungry right now. I got it. I got it. You know I mean, what I'm saying? That, that's crazy because you just put that out like seven days ago. Yeah, and it's like the crazy thing is like uh the tape that's that's done and. If you if you like knew me back when I dropped the interlude, my very first tape it came out on November fifteenth. I told uh, um, once I realized that rap was what I wanted to do, I was like, "Yo, I'm gonna win two Grammys." And this was always the plan was to drop the three mixtapes, let people know I could rap. Hold up, the interlude. I, the first one I saw was more sauce, please. And I know, and I, and I saw you kept tagging it, but I was like, you know, I, I let it be. But so this is this is my fourth tape, bro. <laughs> so where are the other ones? It's on Spinrilla. I had him on my um. I had him on um. You want to save all this for the interview, or you want to go ahead and? Or, or I, I can tell you behind. I can tell you now. Just keep going, man. Yeah, yeah, all right, for sure. Yeah. So essentially, I've been, like, I've been I've been recording for the last minute because once we start talking about good stuff, I just record because I can use it. I can just put I'm, it in I'm later. Man. All right, mom. So essentially, the interlude was. Well, let me just take let me just take you back then, bro. So I guess it's getting into getting into music, um. Back at like at state, man. Um, freshman year, like we used to go to hunt. Um, not no, not hunt, but DHL. And when they had to like the lab in there, and so like we used to go in there like messing around, make some songs, or whatever. And so at that point, I, I knew like I wanted to make a mixtape, but it was so much going on. You're in college, so I used to go in and make make a couple songs, but I was like, you know, I never thought it was serious or anything like that. So um, you know, I worked a little bit and then they always came back. Like, so once I quit my job or whatever, cause I realized that's not what I wanted to do. Um, I like, I know making a mixtape was always on my bucket list. Uh -huh. And so with that being said, I was like, all right, so I just start writing. And so that's when I did the interlude. And so when I did it, I always wanted something that I wanted to stay up late to do. I wanted to wake up early and recording it gave me that feeling. So at that point I was like, man, you know, music is something that's, that's what I really wanted to do. And so, I dropped the interlude November 15th, um, and then I dropped the uh, Vibes, which was my next uh, mixtape that came out um, New Year's, on New Year's. And then what, I dropped, what year? You're, we're, you're uh, still, we're still in college at this point? No, 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 no. My first tape, November 15th of 2016. That's the interlude. Oh, but okay. Yeah, I just dropped. Yeah, so essentially, I just started rapping like in August. I mean, I used to like seriously. Like, like back in college, you know, you well, we go in there, my boys, you go in there, make some songs and stuff, but it was never like, y'all want to be a rapper. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, it was like, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so once I made the interlude and that came out November 15, 2016. So last year, um, that's all that meant. I really liked the process and that's why I just started writing every day since then. So, um, I write, I write every, and to this day, so I write every day, and then, um, yeah, so then I, I dropped the interlude, dropped vibes, I'm like, um, about like a month and a half later, and then, um, I dropped more sauce, please, um, that's the one I feel like people realize, like, you know, I could rap better than they thought that I could rap. So is that yeah. one only two songs? More sauce, please, nah, and that's on my, on my SoundCloud, it looks like it, because I took, I took, um, Cause all the, the the tapes before Good Things Await You was yeah. not original beats, so okay. essentially I wanted my SoundCloud just to reflect an original sound for me. I so, got you. You know what I mean? So my Spinrilla, like on my Spinrilla, has all my previous mixtapes, like the Interlude, Vibes, More Sauce, Please, and even Good Things Await You. So you're, my, uh, yeah. you're not gonna put those on the SoundCloud? All the old stuff? It was on SoundCloud. I, I just I keep it on Spinrilla. Cause so you're not gonna put it over there? No, probably not. Okay. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. All right. And the, and your old stuff that has similar vibes to um, the good things await you, like similar. Obviously, there's gonna be growth there because it's been yeah. a year, or probably more since you've written those lyrics. But um, I say all this stuff is is similar. The thing I'll, I'll try to do with music is never for anything I've do to sound like something before. 
So it's a similar feel, and I feel like as an as an artist, I'm developing the sound that I want to have. So you can hear the growth and progression, but as far as like quality and growth, I feel like good things away to is a big jump from anything I had previously. Okay. So um, I mean, it's good to li- I mean to listen to the old stuff because you can definitely see progression. But I feel like more sauce, not more sauce, but good things await you was definitely the leap in getting is like now I have more so my own sound or closer to my own sound that I want to have. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. So were you working with Money Montage on the old ones too? No. Nah, so the old ones actually I got beats off of YouTube. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh it was, you know, I was chemical in, you know, former life chemical engineer, man. So um, I was always good with words and I used to write like poetry, but not too many people know. And um, so when I said I want to rap, you know, you got to think if not too many people know you can rap or do anything like poetry at all. Nobody's going to give you beats. And, you know, even thinking about it for myself, I had to ask myself, am I going to sit, you know, and really pay for beats? And I don't even know how good I am. I've never done a project. So uh-huh. um, that's why I wanted to like do those other tapes. And I just took, you know, what I could get like with the YouTube beats, honestly. And uh, just to see how good. I can do is like, you know, starting off playing an instrument. You're not gonna go and buy like the most high class, uh, you know, one if you're just trying to see if you're even gonna take the time to learn how to play. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? So that's what it was. Okay. So, um, so you've been rapping for a year. Mm. What's what's the plan going forward? Like, you're hungry. You mentioned yeah. that earlier. You just came out with a project about seven days ago. Yeah. What's what's the future now? Are you going to be like focusing on like promoting that project over the next few weeks or are you you're writing? I'm sure you're writing in the mm-hmm. background here. Uh I guess a lot, man. Um so a sense, uh, well, one one of the things is writing. So I write every day even if, you know, I don't have as much time. I feel like in life you either getting better or you getting worse. Nothing ever stays the same. So any day I don't write, I feel like I'm not as good as I was the day before. So, I mean, I always put some time aside to write. It's become a habit for you? Absolutely. You so, know, absolutely. So, so much yeah. so where you get like a little anxiety if you didn't write that day? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm always writing because I'm always listening to music. So it's like even if it's like a song I like or something that comes on, you know, I'm always thinking of like, you know, what would I have said? Or, you know, just like as it's on. So it's, it's a habit. It's really more of a habit now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, yeah, the music, working on the music. Um, definitely, I want to promote this project. My biggest thing is I listen to a lot of music. I enjoy a lot of styles of rap, and I want to do a lot of styles of rap. And so if you look at Good Things Await You, if it's five tracks. But if you were to take any one of the songs by itself and just heard it, you may think that this is the direction I want to go. And, and my thing is mm-hmm. I want to be a dynamic artist and a dynamic rapper where I can give you a different type of, um, a couple of different type of vibes of rap, not just a black magic feel or not just, uh, you know, a main shorty feel. I want it to be when you see the song title, you don't know what you're gonna hear, but you know you can still appreciate it, you know, nonetheless. So that was that was the plan. So essentially, it was five five singles all in one project, um, which is the good things await you just to set up future projects coming up. Okay. Did you know? Did you know? Since we're on the subject of Black Magic, did you know that that song was gonna be so well received when you were making it? <laughs> uh kinda, but not really. I mean, like, I knew the beat was hard. You know what I'm saying? Cause like, I was with my boy uh, Keith. He's actually one of engineered the uh, project. So uh, he, we was playing it, and we was like, "Yo, this shit is hard." And so we knew the beat was hard. We started like, you know, writing to it a little bit, and um. So, so yeah, and then and then it's like, I played this song for my roommates as I was writing it and recording on my iPad, and they liked it. But then, you know, honestly, it's probably not my favorite, my most favorite song. Because <laughs> uh, I heard the beat so many times, man. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, but, uh, but yeah, so I actually wasn't even going to put it on Good Things Await You. So I came downstairs, and I was and like... That would have uh, been unfortunate. It would, it would have, it would have, in, in hindsight. And so, uh, you know, I was talking to Moss, and I was like, yo, I was playing on the tape. And I'll get things away too, but it was all rough on my iPad. He was like, bro, you don't got the black magic on there? <laughs> I was like, I'll probably hold it, man. He was like, bro, you got to put it on there. So and at that point, it wasn't even done being written. So I went back upstairs, finished writing it. And that's when I ended up recording it the next day. So, um, yeah, I, I knew people would like it just because of the bounce of the song. Uh-huh. But 
I feel like it's the one that would hit the hardest initially, but although it would allow other ones, the other songs to grow on you just because it's on the project as well. It may not, it may end up be people's favorites, you know, forever, but I feel like it's other ones that may grow on you as well. Yeah. yeah. I feel, I, I was very surprised that you were actually good because I feel like, yeah. I feel like when you know people that rap, like everyone raps and like, yeah. they're not always as good as they think they are. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, so I was I was very surprised. So give yourself a pat on the back for that. I, I appreciate it. And man. two, I don't even listen to that much rap anymore. I don't know if you've been on the channel recently, but it's very hard for a rapper to get on my channel. Yeah, I'm, yeah, no, I've, I've been, yeah, I've peeped a couple other stuff. So yeah, <laughs> I'm very critical of rap now. That's fair. Um, I don't listen to it too much. I listen to more like what I post on the channel. Mm. Um, so you should be proud of yourself with that too. <laughs> Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Um, the other song... Uh, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying, man, like... I'll be honest, man. I don't I don't, I don't, don't enjoy a lot of a lot of the, the, the newer rap, too, man. I mean, like, not... I feel like I respect it yeah. as far as, like, what it means to the game. And I know everybody has their creative stuff. But just the music that when I really, like, started listening to music seriously and, and rap, you know, to be specific, you know, I, I listen to, like, a lot of... Um, people that was lyrical, but also made good music. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I, I'm not saying like people don't make good music now, but it's not as more on the lyrical side. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with my music, I definitely want to. I know right now it's all about a vibe and about a feeling, but I want to incorporate that. But at the same time, still push the art of you know words and, and lyrics because like you know I start off writing poetry, and so I, I really like you know real good words and real good wordplay. Okay. Yeah. So you mentioned it earlier, and I, I kind of knew this. Chem chemical engineering is what you mm -hmm. majored in in college. Then you went on, I guess. Well, I majored in business. business. I majored business? in business. Yeah, okay, but I did so, chemical engineering. Yeah. So how, how'd you do that? How'd you do that jump? Um, so I was in, yeah, just business major, uh, concentration in marketing. Um, but uh, one of my fraternity brothers, he's actually a chemical engineer. So you know I wanted to get into sales, and so he hooked me up with the interview. But... I've never taken, you know, engineering or, you know, chemistry <laughs> for that matter. But, uh -huh. you know, somebody told me, um, if you can read, write, and talk, you can do anything. And so I kind of took that to heart. And so I figured, you know, it could only be, but if somebody's doing it, it can only be what's so hard. So, right. Um, yeah, so, you know, I was just, I got the interview and uh, I did well on the interview. I was fortunate enough to, you know, get the opportunity. So I did that for three years and just uh, saved up, really, um, to the point because, you yeah, go ahead. So you are an actual chemical engineer, like the the one that like people have to like major in to get a job for? Yeah, I was. Yeah, like I, I did that. I did sales. Yeah, like I was running, you know, pinks and blues, like al alkalinity tests and all that stuff. Cause I did it for uh, industrial water treatment. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. So, uh, you saved up for three years. Is that does that mean like you're able to focus on music full time now, or you're taking a break from that? Oh. Or yeah, yeah. So, um. My, my biggest thing was, man, like, uh, I didn't know, I know, like, the corporate life was something I didn't want to do forever, but I didn't right. know what it is that I wanted to do. So my whole point was, while I was doing that, just to put enough money away, that whenever it is I, I figured out what I wanted to do, I can do that solely and just really focus in on that. And not even worry about the money. And not even, yeah, not even worry about the money, not even worry about uh, anything else and just, like, Treat it like a job, because I really, I, I believe that if you want something, and this is my philosophy, but if you want something bad enough, you have, it can't be another option. Like, you know, it has, you had that has to be the only thing you focus on. And so it's like, I didn't want, um, you know, any other distractions from anything else. So um, when I quit, I didn't know I wanted to make music. I didn't know that this is what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted I needed the funds to do whatever it is I wanted. And so when I found out music was what it was, you know, I just I focus on it every day. Like, uh -huh. you know. So how much how much longer do you think you'll be able to do that full time? Um, I, mm -hmm. I, I mean, more or less before the funds run out or before you're able to make some money doing that. Um, oh. Are you just kind of biding your time? No, I mean, how much longer? I'm good. I feel like in, until 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 everything falls into place. Okay. Yeah, I'll be good until. I, my thing is like, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I got I got I got like uh, 
unwavering confidence, you know, when it just comes to certain things. And I understand that, you know, the route isn't easy and more, many people don't, you know, succeed in it. But at the same time, I'm the type of person nobody outworks me if it's something that I want. You know what I mean? And so um, even for me to have start rapping, you know, seriously in August or from the time I started um, doing the, uh, you know, I dropped the interlude. I feel like I've made a, a big jump thus far. And just from, um, you know, okay, I drop good things await you. And I know I feel like that got people respect. I got, I got the respect from other people from like uh, for a rapper. And I already, I have something that's coming out that's much better than that. You much better. I mean? and, oh, okay. much better. Yeah, much better than that. And much better than that. And then, um, and yeah, and I, I'm still writing. I'm still writing now. So, um, I, I won't stop. Like, I don't. I don't stop. And because I know essentially where I want to be, and from the time I wake up to the time I go to sleep, I'm listening to music. I'm looking up something music related. Now I'm studying it. I'm looking at it. Like I have the the college background, you know, and I have the, and I know like the time it takes to treat something like a profession when you really want it. And granted, you know, music is a hobby, but if this is what I want to be a career, then I have to treat it as such, you know. So. I mean, very well said. Yeah, so that's the that's the plan. You know, I'm you know I'm coming in it at uh, you know, 25 when I started, and I understand most people have been doing it for years and different things. So I got to play catch up, and if that's the case, you know, I just got to make up time on wherever I can make up time. So yeah, that's crazy. I mean, a lot of people I've interviewed on this on the show before have been doing it like six, seven, eight years, like since they were like 16, you know? And obviously their skill right. set kind of mirrors that because, you know, they know they know how to produce, they know how to engineer. Right, right. Um, you know, they, they know how to mix and master their own stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, where do you, where do you see, like, what are your goals for the rest of 2017? Go off. <laughs> Go off? <laughs> <laughs> Go off, yeah. Uh uh, goals rest of 2017 man look so I'm gonna share this with you and I know this is a bold statement but okay. you know but I mean I, I believe in speaking things into existence um this next project is gonna be crazy and I don't want to say I really don't want to say my expectations for it I'm just gonna let it do what it what it does but the plan always was to drop three tapes, you know, just using the YouTube beats just to show people that I could actually rap before I put the more time and more money and effort into it. And to show yourself, right? Cause and to show, yeah, prove it to myself. Cause exactly, more than anything, man, it was, do I believe I'm a rapper? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That I, yeah, I can rap, but being, being able to rap and being a rapper is two different things. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And so, so I feel like uh, the, the first three tapes was um, me proving I guess to myself that I can rap and to other people that I can rap and good things await you was to show that I have my own sound and that I can, that I'm a songwriter and that I can make, I can make original content without any other, you know, preface or something else. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like good things await you has done that. And then I gotta, I gotta push that. But this next project is now, you know, a full length project. Um, yeah, now that I have, you know, I feel like once Good Things Await You runs its course, I have people's attention. And so the next the next project is to really, you know, like that. That's yeah. So and that's that's the plan. So do that and then um Yeah, I mean, just just continue, just keep pushing and get more comfortable as um, you know, just the artist. Uh because you know, all this is new. Right. That, yeah, all this is new. No, I'll um, I said the biggest thing. I know I'm talking a lot, man. So if you got no, questions, please, stuff, please keep talking. Oh, all right. Well, um, I know um, one of the biggest things about this whole journey and things that I've had to uh, to learn about is stepping outside of your comfort zone because I didn't grow up um, going uh, to you know art school or focusing on music. Mm -hmm. So to decide that you know music is something i want to pursue as a career and want you know and want to make a life out of it then it forces you to get outside of your comfort zone much more often than you would doing something else because this is you're learning on an everyday basis on what works what doesn't work um you know what what vibe you want to give off what you know what you want 
your mark to be. And when it's art, you know, it's it's itself, you know, it's a uh, form of expression. So at the same time, it's it's just a lot, you know. And so where in other circumstances you wouldn't have, it's not mandatory for you to put so much out there for people to receive something. You see what I'm saying? If that mm -hmm. makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, yeah, it's just it's. It's been cool though. I mean, it's been it's been a journey. Been you know learning a lot more, and um, I definitely been able to grow as a person because it, it it forces you to get outside your comfort zone and do things like I wouldn't you know I wouldn't normally do. Like I've I've never performed. You know what I'm saying before. Right. So, but you know, starting to do that more so, or just getting comfortable, um, you know, is is, is a big thing. But you know, I enjoy it. Do so. you ha do you have any performances lined up for this summer, or or this um, year in general, or that's just something you're gonna be thinking about in the future? Yeah, I mean that's something I'm thinking about. That's something I would, I would love to line up. But uh, as this being my, you know, seven days ago, I dropped my first original project. So now it's just getting that out there and letting people get their ears on it. So um, you know, I can perform where I want to. You know, it's just getting, um, you know, getting it out there and just connecting with with the right people to make that happen. Right. Yeah. Um. So have you have you done any collaborations with any like either like SoundCloud artists or any local other artists? Do you have any collaborations lined up? The only collaboration I've ever done was uh, I actually went to Australia. This is like right before I uh, dropped the interlude. So I was in Australia and this was kind of you know I just started rapping, but I, you know I always could write. So uh, I met some guy at a guy named Conrad, but I met him at a skate park randomly. So I was in Australia solo. So I'm at a skate party, ended up talking to him, and um, he invites me to his party, and I, you know, I end up rapping for him at the skate party. So when he invites me to his party, I end up rapping for some of his buddies or whatever. One of the guy who works at a radio station, invites me to come up to the radio station, to, you know, just to freestyle. So I go up there, rap <laughs> That's a little bit. crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> and this is crazy. And mind you, I'm out, I'm out here solo. Like, you know, I don't know anybody. I didn't, I didn't coordinate this. So okay. Um, so, so I go out there, I rap on the um, radio station. Um, and then some of the guys was like, oh, man, you think you can do a verse for this song? And they played this song, and, this song, and I, I like it. So I was like, hell yeah. So I was like, yo, we got to have it done today. So I was like, all right. Wow. So, yeah, so I ended up going over there. I ended up uh, writing a verse that day, recording it, and then the song came out uh, probably like two weeks later. So um, it's actually still on my SoundCloud. It's called uh, Slow Burning. Yeah, Slow Burning. Okay. And so, um, so, yeah, so that's the only collab I've done. But other than that, no collab. So all my uh, tapes that I've actually released – no features um and actually at first it was um it, i guess the thought of doing something with no features i guess it's intimidating because it makes you feel like you gotta come up with a lot of content that makes sense and that flows but as i've been doing it i actually prefer it um i feel like i would like to have some features maybe at some point but right now i enjoy not not having any features man it's like it's like uh playing sports being on rookie minutes you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah it's like you know, at the end of the day, I want, I want to play the whole game. Like, uh, I'm still trying to show people that I can rap. And mm -hmm. um, I know, like, how good I am. And at that point, if it takes uh, not having features and doing whole tapes and whole projects of people enjoying the music, that way it's no asterisk. It's like having no asterisk by a win. It's like, no one can say, oh, well, he, he can rap, but he can't do a hook. Or he can do hooks, but he can't rap. Or no ad lib. So it's like, you know, you just do a whole tape. And you do it, and you're consistent, and you consistently showing progression. Then there's there's no there's no doubt, there's no asterisk you can put by it. So I would like to do features, but at this time I'm not I'm not pressed about it. Okay. So, yeah. but you but you would do features on other people's projects. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Because I know I know uh, collaborating in that way is a great way to kind of build your your base, especially yeah, on absolutely. SoundCloud. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know one, you can use one person's uh, I guess Fan subscriber base. base yeah to help build up your yeah. own and it's a really it's a really great way to do that fairly quickly um, as as well as you know to kind of diversify your skill set working with different people as well right right I would say one thing though for me um, when it comes down to it too is I'm I'm in it for the long haul and in the long run and so right. when, it, when it also when it comes when it comes back and it comes down to it I want my catalog to be like amazing, you know, like when it comes down to music. And and so like I never came into the music for the money. The money is cool and I would like the, the money. But it, when I was a chemical engineer and granted, you know, everybody wants more money. 
but I wasn't at a bad place to where I needed more. I mean, I was getting what I wanted to yeah. have done at that point. So, um, and for this asset with the music, I'm doing it for like the art, man. For like just the love of the music. Like, I really like. I know people don't know it, but they may know it now. But I really love music, like a lot. And so, for me, if I if I'm doing it, I want and I'm representing music. Then at that point, I want. Whatever it is, I'm con I'm contributing to the art form. I want it to be, I want to be amazing, you know. And I know I'm still I'm still starting, it and there's a lot of room for improvement. But I'm not one to just say, oh, you know, I want somebody's fans to just do a feature, right? Or you know, or a feature like that. I mean, that's just like even long run. It's like if I feel like it it will come out with great music, and it's something that I will enjoy, then yeah, that'd be cool. But if it's just like, you know, this guy's a lot of you know a lot of fans. It would be, you know, it could be, we could make a fun song. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not pressed. That's not what you're about. I got you. No, no, no. I got you. I got you. Yeah. So as far as your uh, creative process goes in, in creating the song, how does, how does that go? Um. Like, take, take me, take me step by step. Step by step to create, uh, create a song. Yeah. Um. So first off, I got like the beat. I mean, if, if the beat. I let you know put the beat on and it's like you know once the drop comes and if if I like it I let it play and more than anything is is just kind of like I'm not big on freestyling I'm not the best freestyle I mean I'm always about writing but I'll try to like freestyle a little bit of stuff just to try to get a cadence and if, like if I can get the cadence right then over the cadence you know and I can switch and get a couple different flows on it that I want mm -hmm. then um then yeah then you know I, I can make it work you know and, and it comes down to like then i'll try that a couple of times and actually try to put some words to the cadence um and yeah then and then i you know i may i may uh write as much as i can until it gets like repetitive or redundant or something just starts feeling like i'm rambling and then i kind of like you know pin it hear another beat and i may like be working on maybe like two or three songs at a time and then like going back and forth and then it's like once i finish one i put it away bring another one in rotation just keep writing and then maybe like you know the next day or later that day i'll go back and listen to it and see if i still like it and if i gotta rewrite some things or whatever but but yeah that's, pre that's pretty much what it is i mean it doesn't take if i like a song i don't know i can do a song for maybe like 30 minutes or it may take like 30 minutes or take maybe like a week or something but if it's a week that's a long time if i really like so if i like a song and if i'm focused on it i can knock it out maybe like 24 hours 48 hours max maybe okay and that, and that's and that's start to finish not just writing that's laying it down yeah. and everything. oh oh well i mean that's just like writing it i mean recording it since i don't record here as like my engineer you know um i recorded it in charlotte my engineer script i mean uh it's really, you know, when, when I get the time to go up there, but that may only take record a song, maybe like an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. So, you know. so since, so since you're relatively new to the music thing, are you learning the, are you, are you just focused on writing right now and like creating the music or are you going to be learning some of the other skills like producing and engineering and mixing and mastering and stuff to be able to like do it all like in house at mm -hmm. your, at your home studio? I want to, I want to be, I want to be the best rapper. You know, I, I'm not, as far as like engineering and producing and stuff like that, I have a appreciation for it and I feel like it's dope and maybe one, and, you know, maybe one day, but that's not really my focus. I feel like, uh, I want to have a good team, you know, a good team around me. People that they want to be the best at what they want to do rather than trying to be, you know, a jack of all trades and a master of none. I, you know, I'd rather just focus on like the writing and really make that, be my main you know my main focus right mm -hmm. i agree i agree with you there um i feel like your your chemistry with money montage worked really well on this last project uh you plan on working with him in the future oh absolutely i absolutely i feel like um with the beats his beats man is has a lot of personality and i feel like it uh it allows me to like I feel like with a good beat, it kind of, you it already has like the theme of what you want, and you kind of just have to just add the words to it. You know what I mean? It, right. it makes the, the the job of an artist or a writer 
that much more easier because it's like it's already telling you what to say essentially. And I feel like what Monta is like he he takes the time in his beats. They build. It's not redundant. It has it has personality to it. And so you know, with me, I, well, I grew up listening to like I love instruments. I love instrumentals. Um, you know, I love like piano covers and, and you know things of that nature. So hearing a beat that has you know different elements um, and layers of the beat, it just makes it makes my job much easier because that's the kind of stuff I like to listen to anyway. Right. So um, so yeah, I definitely like to work with, continue to work with them, and definitely plan on um, got some stuff coming up because it's a good, like you said, it's good chemistry. All right, good. That's good to hear, man, because y'all did some good work. Uh, what are your goals for your music career? Like, what would you consider a success? Um, respect. I want. I want the respect. I want. Um, I want to be one. I want to be one of the best. Period. Like, uh, I know it's you know a cliche thing to say, but um, I feel like I can. I feel like I can be. Like, I I'm definitely a student of the game. Before I was rapping. I listen to music, you know, all the time, every day. And now that I rap, I still listen to music all the time. And it's like, I take it, I have a student approach to it. Um, where I listen to, I look, you know, who's who's doing, um, why do people like different people? Why do people appreciate? What is it about this art style that people like? Um, and that uh, I try to incorporate it and just take different elements and try to put my own style on it. But I want the respect. I want, I want awards. I would like awards. I would like the recognition as well. Um, I mean, you know, who doesn't want the money? Uh, but uh, but yeah, more than anything, I, you know, I want to I want to push it forward. I want to push the I want to push the art form form forward. I want to be uh, I want to have like an, an era in the game. Like if you think about the best, you know, hip hop artists. You know, speaking specifically, there was times where, you know, Wayne was dropping a mixtape. You know, every week, and it was understood yeah. that Wayne was like he was saying he was the best rapper alive. And that was a legitimate, you know, statement. Like, you know, you got to really sit down and think about that, you know. And that right. was when you know, Jay Z was really, you know, in his prime as well. And Jay Z had an era in the game. We look at when Fifty Cent came out. He had an era with him and G Unit. They really had that movement. And you look at Drake. I mean, Drake is, you know, doing what he's doing. And so, you know, and others as well. But I want, I want that. I want that where it's understood when I have a song that comes out. That is a must listen. That like you can't listen to this like everything else. Like you know, you gotta you gotta get mentally prepared because it's like and that's and I want to make the kind of music that deserves that. You know that deserves that ear. So that's um that's that's uh that's gold pretty much in a nutshell. Okay, and you're talking nationally, worldwide, or oh or, or yeah, locally. period, 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 everywhere, period. period. Like when when hip hop like. When hip hop is Google, you know, rap, whatever. That's 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 what I want to be. I got you. How yeah. did you, how did all right, this may seem like a dumb question, but how did you come up with the name Wise for your rap moniker? Like why uh, why that name? Was that was that just the easy way out or? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, right. Uh, that, nah. And the crazy thing is, man, like everybody knows me, bro. I put like Wise on everything, man. Like so, it's it's my last name. So. Um, yeah, I was on a project maybe like three years ago. Two wise words, you know. I, put I remember wise, that. You know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, you know, I put I put put wise on everything, man. I um, I like it, man. I and and I feel like uh, in many ways I have like you know old soul and I have a lot of wisdom. So and they say people are their name, so I, you know I like the name. Um, so I will go with wise and with the dollar sign with for the S is like it just has an edge to it because I know, uh. With my background, people would expect a certain style of rap, you know, especially. And then when you hear, all right, this guy, rapper's name is Wise. So you're already expecting, I would, you know, like a con a very lyrical conscious tip. And it's lyrical, but at the same time, I wanted the dollar sign to represent the edge that the music has as well. You know, so it's like, um, you know, I'm an educated person. Like, you know, I get it, you know, and, and but at the same time, it's like, I understand entertainment. And so it's like, you know, is putting that edge in there. So that's, you know, that's why I chose, uh, chose why. And it was, it's authentic, it, it, you know, it's who I am. I didn't want to be a situation, you know, where I'm, I create this whole another person that's no, nowhere near who I am. And I'm always trying to be this and it's not, you know, who, who I am, so. Okay. Yeah. 
So you're currently living in North Carolina now? Yeah. Um, where? Greensboro. Greensboro, right. North Carolina. Greensboro, North Carolina. Yeah. So I don't I don't know too much about the music scene there, but I'm assuming it's not as big as like New York and LA or something like or even Atlanta or pretty much anywhere. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 facts, facts, facts. But um are you are you planning on moving somewhere big like New York, LA, just to name a few places to because for music. For music, yeah. I find that it's at least a lot of the artists that I know that have moved there, it's a lot easier to network in those mm -hmm. places obviously and rub shoulders with the people that can really advance your career. Um, do you have any thoughts about that? Um, possibly, but uh, at the same time I, you know, I thought about it and I, I felt like it would mean so much more, you know, making it from home. You know, uh, I because you know, yeah, I could go somewhere else and then bring it and then you know come back, but you know where the internet is and you know social media. If you have something, it may take more time, but you can get it out there. And if once once the time comes and I can make it from being from Greensboro in Greensboro or North Carolina at the time. I feel like that would mean much more, you know, for me. And it's like, I know where I want to take the music. And so, you know, I feel like it just give it give much more hope to, you know, not even just small, not just Greensboro, but other like smaller cities and stuff that not to limit it based on, um, you know, your, your, your direct environment. So, I mean, possibly if the opportunity comes, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not pressed to move somewhere else to try to make the music go. I feel like the music will speak for itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fair. Uh, what did your parents say when you told them you wanted to do music, when you wanted to quit your job and focus on music? And then tell uh, tell me also what other what like your friends and family anybody. said too. Yeah, what, what what did people say? Um, well, I guess when when I quit, um, I guess they most people that know me knew that the time was gonna come at some point and. When I quit, I didn't know music was what I wanted to do. So I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just knew it wasn't what I was doing. So uh, when I quit, I feel like most people knew that the, the time was gonna come at some point. Um, and they know like if I'm the type of person, if I say I'm gonna do something, then it's pretty much already done. It's just that I'm just letting y'all know <laughs> that you uh -huh. know this is this is what you know this is what I the conclusion I came to. So. Uh, you know, people were very, very supportive. I mean, I'm sure they was, um, you know, worried and probably still worried, you know, at, at you know, to this day. But, um, yeah, and so I feel like it was one of those things like, you know, are you sure? But, and then when I decided, you know, music was what it is that I wanted to do, then, you know, it's another level of, of being worried as well because not some people make it, you know, doing music, let alone, People don't even know I can do music. You know, I, I mean, hell, I don't even know, you know, if I can do, you know, at that point, if I can do music, you know, on that level. But it's what I decided I wanted to do. So it's just, um, it's just that. But for me, I don't, that doesn't ever bother me as much because it's something somebody told me, man, that you, if you have a dream that somebody can see the first time you tell them, it's not big enough. So I wasn't expecting, um, you know, everybody to understand where it was I was trying to go and take the music. Um, because if so, then, you know, maybe that wasn't for me because, you know, like like I said, it's not big enough. So, um, but yeah, I feel like as time goes on and especially with the good things that wait you coming out, the vision is, people can see the vision much more than they can see, have seen it before. Yes, so, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you there. For sure. Oh. I, de I, def I definitely kind of see your sound. I definitely see where you're going with it. Um, mm. I think you've carved out a nice little niche there. I appreciate it. So I, th I think you'll have a lot of success coming forward, especially with the new project coming out whenever it comes out. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll be good. You ever thought about uh, signing a record deal? Have you thought about that? Like if the time, when the time comes, record labels, you know, performing for them and stuff. Is that something mm. you'll do? Nah. Uh, I feel like I wanted to at first, but that was when um, I feel like I wasn't as confident in my music at the time. That was when I was on other tapes, was over YouTube. I didn't have any original beats, um, and I was still trying to figure out a whole a lot. And 
I kind of wanted to put so much more in somebody else's hand and basically say I can just do the music and I'll let um, somebody, uh, you know, a label uh, figure out everything else. Um, but I look at it like, you know, me being an educated person, if somebody else can figure it out, man, I can figure it out. And and also, was, once again, you know, I, I sat back and I thought about it was I really doing it for the music. And, if the, and you know, putting out art is really putting out, you know, a, a part of yourself. And I want to own all the art that I put out and that I have. So, um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm open for like partnerships and stuff down the road. But as far as like signing to somebody and, you know, people having a piece of, you know, the, the music, I, I can't, I can't, at this point, I can't say I would do that. Okay, that, that makes that makes sense. I think more and more people are starting to get hip to the fact that you don't need a record label to, uh, I guess, mass market your music and get it distributed right. to everywhere it needs to go. Right. And I, I think the record labels are really scared about that too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Another thing, if anyone's listening to this, any other artists, um, record labels have a way of signing a bunch of artists and like mm-hmm. all, all the hot ones that they have pay for all the other ones that they don't have so they'll like just lock you in a closet even though you're still signed and hold, exactly, your, yeah. hold your projects hostage so that's yeah that's crazy so i definitely think you know if you're building from the beginning you should definitely think about the infrastructure that you're building and mm-hmm. um, make it make it worthwhile and make it so that you don't have to sign a deal if, right. if you don't have to but i mean everyone's situation is, is different so i'm not i'm not going to judge you there but you know, just do what you just do what you can. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I know you mentioned about uh, carving out a, a lane. So my, I guess my question is for you from hearing hearing the tape. What lane do you feel like that is, and like what um, what about the music that you feel like I can add to the, the culture that somebody maybe isn't doing right now, or hasn't been done in a while? Um. Well, obviously things are going more trappy right now, so you're definitely not that. Mm-hmm. So that kind of separates you from like 80% of the people putting out music. <laughs> right, um, right. Um, I kind of got, like you said, you're an old soul. I kind of got that old school vibe. You've got the kind of mellow beats, but they're really robust and strong. So I think a lot of that comes from from the uh, production and the chemistry you have with Money Montage. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say that. Uh, also, I haven't really been listening to, the, to that much rap. So yeah. I feel like your music was palatable for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it made me want to listen to it and listen to more. So pretty much every time you release a project, I'm gonna listen to hey, it. Hey, that's good. Yeah, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Not, not just because I know you, but because I actually enjoy your music now. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think some other people are probably thinking that way as well. Right, um, right. Also, like the kind of like mellow sound that that I that I uh, promote a lot. I call it acoustic silk because. It's just a lot of it's just so I smooth. Smooth name, by the way. I, I'm, I, I'm I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna come clean, man. Music <laughs> Stuck is a, is, a, is a smooth name. I appreciate smooth. that. I appreciate yeah. that. I came up. It's actually a word. I think it's some like guitar word, but okay. Um, it's it's like a real thing, but I actually mm-hmm. came up with that because the music I was listening to at the time was just was just so damn smooth, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I was like silk, and then I was like, okay, I'm listening to it. So audible silk? Nah, that doesn't sound as good. Right, right, Acoustic right, right. silk. Acoustic <laughs> silk, man. That's, yeah. Cause like just the word acoustic, you know, makes you think of acoustic guitar and is is a smooth song. And then you mix you mix that with just silk, man. That's that was good, man. It sounds like like if I heard a song or a project named Acoustic Silk, I listen off the title. Yeah, you know what I mean. Man, that's uh-huh. so smooth. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, man. So I appreciate that. But um, yeah, I feel like I feel like your project fits well on the channel for, for mm-hmm. that reason. It's just it's just so smooth and uh, you know robust in that in that way. So. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I just, you know, I, I just feel like with with the music, man, the lane is that I'm trying to, I guess, feel essentially is there's people that really like rap music, but they like the art that goes into the rap music, and they like actual rap. But it's also is like there's some, I feel like there's some rappers that they are very lyrical, but they don't have the best ear for beats for somebody that's a casual listener. Mm-hmm. And there's somebody that has casual beats, but they their style of rap is too relaxed that they don't that um people don't they want more out of the actual rap. So it's it's kind of like there's not much, uh, not many rappers that exist in the space where you got a great beat and you also got the content that you want to fit in that beat. I feel like people that do that very well is like 
somebody like a Drake, which is off like right. people enjoy Drake's music a lot because it's like, man, that beat is really good. But now he's also he's saying something that is like, man, like, you know, this is also this this would have been good acapella, but now it's over a great beat. You know, that really takes it to the next level. And I feel there's not a lot of um people that I feel like do that that rap, that only rap and really just rap. I feel like there's people like you think of like a Bryson Tiller that kind of floats in that lane, but he also sings a little bit and he, you know, and he, and he flows a little bit, but I don't sing, you know what I mean? It's like, and it's like, I, I'm not, I'm not one to pretend like I can sing because uh-huh. that's not, that's not my forte. So it was like, I like those vibes, but I got to be able to do it in a rap way. Yeah. And I know for me, when I listen to music, I, I'm a sound guy. So I, I got to like yeah. how it sounds first before I even can even touch oh, the lyrics. Absolutely. And, absolutely. And how I even start to digest the lyrics is, the sound gets me coming back over and over and over again to the song. And then right. after about 10, 15 times, then I'll start listening to the lyrics. But, <laughs> exactly. But it's got to exactly. sound good first. So Absolutely. that's kind of why I got away from rap because, I don't know, like the stuff I was listening to, like acoustic mm-hmm. silk style stuff, just sounded way better to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I just kept reaching for that over and over again. So and I feel like what rap kind of, you know, rap went from it being heavy on just you know the words to now it being more so about a vibe and and now like you you think about it and you listen to the rap music coming out it's all about a vibe like regardless of what's being said how is the song making me feel and if something is being said it's a bonus rather than it being what's being put on the forefront and so i feel like if you put both things on the forefront it's a it's it's a special place where you can exist and rap but you have to commit to doing it. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, it's not easy to do, but it, it it's, when, if done properly, I feel like, you know, it could, it, you know, it, it's big, you know, because you think about like people like, you know, people enjoy Biggie's music because, you know, the beats were A1 and he was able to make his voice just sound like another instrument the on the flow, beat. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> regardless of what he said, it's just like, it sounds like another instrument uh-huh. just with words, you know what I mean? And that's, I feel like that's that's big, you know, right there. And and that's why I give a lot of credit to honestly, man, my engineer. Yeah, um, it's actually uh one of my homeboys from high school. Uh, we play basketball together and he um he raps as well and he went to school for uh sound engineering. Okay. Um we worked on a project and we we really sat there, man, and he got like you hear black magic. I mean I wrote it, but he he got he has it like the sounds and some of the effects and some of the things he was able to do. He really took that to the next level. Um, so I give a lot of credit to him as well, man. Yeah, for sure. Got to gotta have a strong team to make, to make a great product. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was I was going to ask, like, did he go to school for that? Because uh, I know a lot of people, they just trial and error, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a lot of things he told me as well, that, you know, trial and error for him. I mean, he goes, you know, to YouTube a lot as well. And I mean, some, you know, he, he said school helped him with technical terms, but, you know, it was a lot of just getting in there and uh, and doing it. And that's why uh, I guess you asked me, did I want to dabble in anything else? But I feel like if a team that really is good at what they do, then it allows you to focus like, you know, really focus on what it is that you want to be good at rather than um, I, I can make beats or I could engineer you know, and it gets the job done rather than somebody that, you know, that's what they're focusing on. And that's, you know, they're really taking the time. That's what they enjoy doing. Right. And that's yeah. another thing, too. Those things take a lot of time to, to oh, learn. Oh, man. Yeah. So who knows if you yeah. actually want to spend the time to actually get good at it or, For sure. you know, but who knows? Like five years down the line, you pick up a little things, you know, every single year. Mm-hmm. Who knows? In five, six years, you could be good at that stuff, too. So Absolutely. Absolutely. And the thing, the funny thing about rap, man, and, and just like, it's like, or it's just entertainment. Um, I know one of the biggest, uh, you know, things that people have, you know, it's like, all right, I'm starting to rap at 25, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and I just turned 26, uh, May 26. So, you know, there's a concept, oh man, all right, you're getting older and, and stuff like that. And think about, oh, you want to pursue rap. And there's people that have been doing it for a long time, don't make it. But in the big scheme of just life, 26 is not is not that old and i feel like in 25 just in general i feel like once you hit your mid-20s you really just get old enough to realize you're getting older you know what i mean yeah and and at that point 
you just have to make real decisions with your life and decide, you know, what direction, what path, and what you want to do. I feel like Jay Z dropped his first album when he was 26. Ross didn't drop his first album until he was 30. These are two guys that has had tremendous success and longevity in in rap and hip hop. And I feel like if you talk, listen to Jay Z in one of his interviews, he says he came in as a grown man, not trying to figure out who he was while while making music. And I feel like sometimes in some artists, you start so early and you're growing up in front of everybody and you're having to decide who it is you want to be on a spot's notice. And who you are today, people are, you know, people are quick to box you in. So if you say you're this today and then, um, you know, this tomorrow, like, imagine if, you know, I would have had a, a rap style based on what I was doing, Two Wise Words, and it got a lot of notoriety. And then it's turn around and say, okay, I want to rap with the wise vibe now mm-hmm. you know then it's kind of like you know it would and i know that you know it's probably one of the biggest things that you know people that know me personally is just like you know i know this guy you know so it's like now i, I know you personally and then i'm hearing the music and then it's like i don't you know i don't talk to a whole lot of people so it's just like if you feel like you know somebody when you don't know them and then you hear it and then it makes you readjust um you know, to everything. So that's one of the bigger obstacles too, just like from a local level, just getting respect from people for being a rapper. When, you know, people feel like that they, they know you rather they do or they don't personally. You know what I mean? Right, 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 right. Mm-hmm. So so how do people act after you play them the music? That uh I guess that's what oh, happened a like, while ago, but Oh, you mean like as far as like newer stuff or like good things await you? You mean like how at what, the- at what stage? Because it is is at different stages, it is different. All right, go take us to the stages. So last year, how did people okay. how did people react? So last year, when I first before I even dropped the interlude, um, I finished recording it, and then I uh, I went to Australia, and so the next week when I was in Australia, that's when I was, you know, on this big you know I'm a rapper kick type deal because I just finished doing my first recording it. Nothing came out yet, but it's like. You know, my head, I'm feeling like, you know, the interlude is the best thing smoking. I can't believe that I actually, you know, wrote that much. Uh-huh. And so I'm down there and, you know, so I'm rapping and stuff and I'm talking to them and they can't imagine me being anything other than a rapper, right? And so this is before the interlude came at my first tape. So when I come back, it's weird because back home, people can't imagine me pot ever being a rapper. And I'm only a chemical engineer, but there I'm only a rapper and they can't imagine me being you know, a chemical engineer. So it's weird. And so then when I come back and then it's like, you know, all right, I announced, you know, I want to, I want to drop a mixtape. I know it's one of those things where, you know, random guy you go to school with, you know, says he wants to drop mixtape. And it's like, you know, it's one of those things like you don't have to do that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, no one's asking you to drop a mixtape, especially if you don't even know this guy can make music. So, you know, I know it's one of those things like people are just weird to listen. But when I heard the interlude, I know it was much better than people thought it would be but when i started continue to make tapes and it was kind of like you get the feeling like all right you know the interlude was cool but are you trying to do this for real though <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah. so um but so it was it was kind of that feel but you know as it continued i feel like now um it's like you know even you know with like promoting promoting yourself putting yourself out there because once i decide all right you know i really want to um you know, rap is like you gotta do other other things that come that come along with it as well. And so, uh, you know, with good things the way you came out, I feel like that's some people kind of really is like, oh, okay, I can I could kind of see where you're trying to go with this. But although the steps was necessary, and it's about just trusting the process for me. Okay. And it's like you know, essentially where I want to be at now. Like I feel, like, I still feel like you know, it's a weird place when you're making the music because. I'm always better than what people are hearing. So it's just like every time, especially since I write every day. So, you know, when you guys are hearing good things away to you, and you're like, man, you know, this is good. Like, this is much better than I thought. I'm just like, like, you know, like, I appreciate it. But I have like, I have some, I have shit that's way harder. Like, before good things away to you came out, people were still, I guess, treating treating me in, in the sense of music wise, like more soft, please. Mind you, I finished writing like I've finished writing Black Magic like two months ago. So I was like, I know that it's just like you know, like from my head, I'm like, man, like y'all are thinking more sauce, please. Is either good, bad, or different? But it's like 
I'm much better than that. But y'all, you know, y'all won't know until so many evil good things the way you came out. It's just kind of like, you know, you know, black magic is cool, but black magic is old. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I got, I got, I got like, I have, I have some, like, I, like, I have some shit, man. So it's just like, um, so it's, it's, it's just weird. So it's always like trying to get more respect that you feel like you deserve more. But you can't really expect more because nobody knows until they know by the time they hear what, you know, what your best stuff was. It's not the best anymore. Uh-huh. So, you know, so it's always that it's always like a weird place to live. Um, you know, not people not hearing exactly who you are at that moment. That's a good point. I'm going I'm to write that down because I'm going to ask that mm-hmm. to, to every single artist after that. So I appreciate yeah. that question. No, no, no. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought about that really before. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like people, sometimes people even wait years before they release music. Yeah. And so yeah. I wonder, I wonder if they think about that too. That's real, man. I, I didn't even think about it from a year standpoint. That's that's actually even tough because I'm I'm thinking like from like a month, and, you know, a months and like weeks at a time. And I don't know, like some artists wait three, four years, and they've been working on that for a while. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's tough, man. Yeah. So Australia solo. I'm interested in doing a solo trip at you some point, move, bro. Life changer. So, so what was what was that? What was that like? So essentially, man, I went to I went to Berlin solo. I went to Amsterdam solo. Wow. Australia solo. Yeah. Three separate trips or one trip? Uh, two separate trips. So I went to Berlin for a week, and then from Berlin I went to Amsterdam, and that was all that one time. And then I came back. For like a month and then i went to australia for two weeks um solo wow and that was all because it's like then i just changed like i just changed it i don't think you know people really understand like how big a deal you know me doing this whole rapid thing is because my whole life is like a, like a 180 man like um like on roses you know when i really that when i started to take off saying you know when i woke up and asked myself and my life was the movie when i watch it that you know that's real you know that's you know, I wasn't just saying that, like, uh, I, I was doing a chemical engineering thing, and I was making the amount of money that I that I thought would be cool to make at that time, and it was dope, and I felt that, I thought that I would feel different than I was at, that I would feel, and that, just as far as sense of happiness, and um, I didn't, you know what I mean, like, I had money, I was doing the things I wanted to do, but I, I didn't feel fulfilled. And so at that point, I decided, you know, I was going to, um, I was done, you know, we're doing corporate and I don't know what I was going to do, but I was going to figure it out. And so I just um, picked three random places that I haven't been and just said, I'll just go. And I threw it out there for people to come. But at the same time, I know it's like random times. I pick random dates and I just like said, I'm going to go this week or this time, this time. And I'm just going to go and I just figure it out. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I, you know, I did that. It was dope, man. It, it's a life changer because when you're out there, number one, you can't be an asshole because you're out there dolo. Right. So, you know, it, it forces you know you're a good person, man, and it's like you um, it forces you to to really reach out and and communicate with people and then talk to people and learn about somebody else's culture and really immerse yourself in that culture because you have to when you're out there alone. You know, you're not gonna go against the grain and, and you learn so much. Um, I remember like uh, being in Berlin. Uh, you know, I rented a bicycle. I, I, I mean, I love the bike, so I rented a bicycle. I like uh, rode the bicycle all across the city. We ended up going out because everybody rides, you know, bikes out there. So I locked the bike up. Um, it's like five in the morning. My phone dies, and I'm in, you know, I'm in a. Uh, I don't speak. Uh, I don't speak German, so. I'm out there, I'm trying to figure my, I'm on a bicycle, I'm trying, my GPS dies on me, and it's like, so I'm trying to figure out how to get home, and I'm asking people that they barely can speak English, or don't speak English, and I don't get home until like 7 in the morning, but you know, you learn things like that, there's experiences that, when you do things like that, and you come back, and um, you realize how much different things are, and, and, and it almost seems like time slows down in a sense, because when you're here, everything is routine you know by you know just things you won't even as far as like the side of the road you drive on just like um customs and things like that so you don't even think about it but when you're over you know you're overseas everything sticks out 
So you're learning every second of the day, you know, um, and it's, it's, it's dope. And, and one thing you realize when you come back, man, you have so many stories and so much to talk about because every day is an adventure and you just, it feels like, man, you've been over there for like months and it's only been like a week and you come back and you're talking about, man, you know, but you know, what did I miss? But it's just like, oh, you know, just a week. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, it's, <laughs> you know, like, um, but, but it's dope. Man. I encourage it. It's, a lot of times it's scary. The thought of it is scary, but really just book the trips, man. Like, don't plan it later. Just book a trip. Just book the trip. Plan it later, man. Because you think about too much, it won't happen. So, so you think you'll do more solo travel in the future? Yeah, yeah, I, I would, I would. Um, yeah, I, I like. I mean, I'm just my personality. I don't like. I'm not opposed to traveling with people and doing things with people, but a lot of times people do a lot of talking, and when it's time to make moves. I don't like waiting around, and if you know you're waiting on people, you'll be waiting forever. So, yep, I'm not opposed to you know taking trips with people, but if need be, I will take another solo trip. And people swear up and down they're gonna go on a trip with you, and then it, when it comes time it, to, to put some exactly, money down, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when it comes down to put money down, or like the time to make a decision, and something happens, and so then if you're waiting, then you're like you're pushing the trip out. So literally, man, what you gotta do is like you gotta book the trip and tell people this is what I'm going. If you can come, I'd love to have you. If not, I will still go. <laughs> and so that's all, that's how you have to do it, man. But, you know, I've learned a lot. I've probably learned so much. Um, like, you know, Australia, that Australia was, was, was dope, man. Um, like, the dude that I met, I was talking to my comrade. First the guy I ever met uh, in Australia. And I was supposed to be in Sydney for a week and in Melbourne the second week. And the meeting them, cool dude, brought me around a lot of people. And I just ended up staying with him and his people the second week and mind you you know i didn't know him and so um so you know that was love and uh and it's just you know just meet people and just learn about different culture man i i definitely recommend it I definitely recommend it okay that's on that's on my list to do maybe in the next few years or something yeah I'll definitely book a solo trip because i i like you said le big learning experience you probably learned yeah. you probably learned more in that week than you had in like a year of your life doing something oh else, so. absolutely absolutely um, so, wow, I appreciate you sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. um, just wrapping up here, do you have any, uh, I guess, wise words um, to, oh, yeah. to, to say for any of any upcoming artists or any uh, you know kid who's scared to put their music out because they're afraid people are gonna uh, harass them or talk junk about the music or anything like that? Do you have any any words of wisdom for them to go by? Man, I will say not even just like. I guess artists just in general, but just like in life, man, like don't let people box you in, like period. I feel like at the end of the day, it's your life, it's your movie. And when it when it's over, it's over. And you know, you can always blame, man, be this person or I was too nervous or blah, 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 but it either got done or it didn't get done. And, um, you know, you gotta put yourself in the mirror at the end of the day. So I look at it like, if it's anything you wanna do or, uh, you ever thought about doing, you know, why not? So, you know, the, I told you just gotta go for it, man. It make, it make people like, whether people are uncomfortable or comfortable, you know, it is what it is. You know, you gotta, you gotta do what you, you gotta do what makes you happy. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you at? Uh, social media wise. Uh, oh, social media, uh, social media, uh, the number two wise words, that's Twitter, Instagram, uh, my SoundCloud. Um, spin Rilla, just look up wise uh, dollar sign for the S. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much. And I sound and SoundCloud, that's most important. SoundCloud is most important. Yeah, so that's what that's for the that's what good things await you. <laughs> exactly, good. exactly. All right, and that's where you'll be releasing your future stuff too, right? Um, so the next project, uh, Spotify, iTunes. Um, that's 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 gonna be that one's gonna be really good, man. And I'm gonna it's my full length project. I'm gonna put that up for streaming. All right, excellent, excellent. Um, what about email address? If you want to, if you want producers to send you beats or anybody yeah. to, to link up with you to for features or anything like that, or just to reach out to you to say what's up. Uh, Aaron Wise ninety one at gmail dot com. So A A R O N W I S C nine one at gmail dot com. Um, my email, so I check it. 
Um, probably not as much as I should, but I've taken enough. <laughs> so there you go. So thank you so much if you're still listening right now. This is Wise. Uh, we'll have him on again sometime. Uh, thank you so much, Wise. Yeah. Won't stop till I'm well known. Facts. FaceTime my other bitch. Drop call, hit the dead zone. White girl on Molly. Black girl on Percocet. Side piece and Riley. Tell the truth, I ain't focused yet. I ain't focused yet. Tell the truth, I ain't focused yet.